Welcome to the Beyond 3D podcast, where we explore all things 3D and the important role that 3D data plays throughout the manufacturing process, driving decisions throughout a product's life cycle. Here, we talk with industry analysts, business owners, developers, and industry influencers, and hear real stories that you can relate to and learn from, and know which trends and technologies apply to your business. So join us as we go Beyond 3D. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Beyond 3D podcast. We are here to talk today about 3D PDF and the magic that it can provide (laughs) your team as far as collaboration and getting things done. And today on the show, we have Dave Opsahl, who is Vice President of Operations for Techsoft 3D. Hi, Dave. Howdy. And Tyler Barnes, Vice President of Marketing for Techsoft 3D. Hello. Hey, Tyler. And our special guest is David Ewing, who is Product Marketing Manager at Aeros Corporation and a champion of 3D PDF. Thanks, David, for joining us. Uh, hello. Thanks for having me. So to get started, David Ewing, why don't you just tell us, because we have two Daves on the line, <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you're doing at Aeros? My background, uh, starting sort of quickly from the beginning, I, I'm an engineer by, by degree. I I designed turbines for a while at General Electric, and then I, I got into automation, and that that got me into PLM, and took a, a few stints, uh, BE Aerospace, Cummins, and now I'm at Aris, where uh, I was a product manager that helped uh, to develop parts of the software, and now product marketing, where I sort of like to think of what I do is translating the highly technical PLM jargon that comes from product teams into something that uh, regular humans can read, uh, <laughs> the folks in the business that have to, to buy this. And we try to translate that and tell, show them what, how we can help. So you're, you're a translator of sorts. You, you help <laughs> us all understand that other stuff. Yeah, I'm sort of the guy that sits on the fence between the technical and the non-technical so I can speak both right languages. Well, it's, that's, been a, that's been an issue for a long, long time. So, <laughs> <laughs> When did you first start using 3D PDFs? And I know we have a story of a big project when you were at BE Aerospace mm-hmm. and the team there. So tell us a little about how that all got started. Well, we were, our team was, was struggling through a rapid growth period, uh, specifically in the first class seats. And um, most of us aren't fortunate enough to fly on the really nice seats, but uh, there's a lot going on under the cushions and covers that we see when we, we walk through first class to the to coach seating. And those seats, when you're producing so many of them, you've got so many things going on that uh, we were having challenges working with Boeing on the integration. And Boeing needs to make sure that the seat... Uh, integrates to the the aircraft both from a mechanical sense and electrical sense. It obviously has to fit. You have to be able to plug all the cabling in to, for the power and the various electronic systems. And the the, the old fashioned drawing that uh, most of us are all familiar with that that process was really breaking down. It, it would take a day to just do a drawing update. It, you know, it was about a week or so to create. Actually, it's more than a week. It was weeks to create the drawings. Wow. And and these weren't manufacturing drawings either. These were the drawings that Boeing needed to get all the necessary views to make sure the seat was acceptable. You know, we sort of laugh about counting the number of zip ties, but they actually do. That's, that's part of a certification requirement, making sure that, you know, there's no wires that can fall out from under a seat that Mm. if there were an emergency, you could trip on. Those are all critical things from a, a, an FAA certification standpoint. That Boeing's checking, so we really had to have our, our information together to help them out. So I'm curious, did you have to, like, why did you turn to 3D PDF, and did you have to do some convincing internally to get people on board, or how did well, that the, evolve? The transition was a little bit gradual. We we had heard about the technology. You know, everybody knew what PDF was. You know, everyone saves a, a Word file to PDF. And we're we're quite familiar with that, and this idea of hey, we can put a 3D model in there was intriguing. And so we started exploring that with a couple of vendors and thought, hey, this works. At that point in time, the engineering team transferred the, the work to my team. And I had a, an engineering services team where we helped build tools, PLM tools, modeling, drawing tools to help the engineers be better, faster, cheaper. And we ran with it. And, uh, you know, we dug in and, and, all right, how do we get these models in there? 
what does it look like, what's going to be useful from a, from our perspective, but also from the customer, meaning Boeing's perspective. And then it became a, a fairly straightforward you know, development project where you lay some requirements down, you build it, basically using an agile method, build it, try it, test it, go through another sprint, do it again. And end of the day, it was very, very successful. Probably the biggest ROI project we ever did and a relatively low cost project. So it was uh, something I'm still very, very proud of. And I know they still mm -hmm. use it and they've continued mm -hmm. to develop it a bit. And hopefully used it in lots of other areas of the company, right? Not just that one. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, from the, from the perspective of, of Boeing, they're extremely happy. They actually said, hey, this is great. Every vendor, you guys got to do it this way too, uh, which was great to be able to lead a pack in that sense. And our operations team saw some of the, the capability we built where we could actually um, interrogate the bill of materials while you're in this 3D PDF and be able to, say, sort and selectively turn off parts of the model. So if you only wanted to see the grounds, that's, that's something mm -hmm. that Boeing would do is check grounds. So they turn off all the seat except the grounds because we knew all this information in the bill of material that we would pushed into this 3D PDF. And the manufacturing guy said, hey, can you use this concept so that we can see build stages? We thought, well, why not? We just need an attribute in the bill of material in the manufacturing bill that told us sequencing. And uh, so you could see where you could go with this technology. Mm -hmm. It was great. So <clears throat> some of our listeners might be listening to this and thinking, oh, that's great for a company like Boeing who's huge and has giant budgets. I'm a small guy. I am not, I'm never going to be able to afford something like that. And so I um, also want to bring Dave and Tyler into the conversation. So when it comes to small and midsize manufacturers or companies who have a need for this kind of technology who are thinking, I would never be able to do this. What's your message to them? Like, cause you did mention day viewing that it was actually pretty low cost. So I think there's a miscon <clears throat> misconception. Yeah, th this this had a, a very big customer in Boeing, but the spend was very, very low. And we also started with a relatively complex problem. This is something really, in, in my opinion, that's a, it's a home run project, that uh, you're a small company, you make widgets that you supply to some other company. This is a great opportunity to streamline your engineering process. You can actually remove some of the drafting steps and go to a 3D PDF. You're getting extremely accurate data in there, uh, machinable, in fact. The, the, the surfacings are, are uh, extremely accurate. And now that, that I, as the consumer of that drawing, whatever customer that you supply to, they don't need to have views that you would typically fret over in making a drawing. They can rotate the model and create as many views as they want. It's an infinite type thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the com think of the component modeling and drafting. This is a, it's a perfect fit. It's a home run. And it's a, it's really a straightforward project. I, I don't like to use words easy and, and impossible, the, the absolutes, but it's just work. Hmm. So Dave or Tyler, some of the conversations that you are having with Techsoft 3D customers who might be midsize or small, what are those conversations like? Do they, are you having to kind of convince them or educate them like, Hey, you know, this is a very accessible technology. This, this is Dave. Also, I, I think Dave just pointed out a very common conversation that I find myself in a lot. And, you know, it is really about how you explain to someone that there's a tremendous amount of benefit here at a relatively small amount of risk, it's something that's very accessible and reachable by virtually anyone in the organization. And you find a certain sense of disbelief when you talk to people. <laughs> uh, they, they kind of go, no, that, that it, it's not possible. Too good to be true, right? Pretty much, yeah. It, it falls into that category. And I think that stories like the one that Dave is telling right now are the kind of thing that hopefully will help people realize that it, it isn't uh, you know someone who's developing a software product that necessarily is telling them how that's really the case it's you know people like Dave that have gone out actually done this and they've used it to tackle pretty significant problems I mm -hmm. mean you think about the scope of what he's describing and the financial impact to a company like Boeing if they can achieve you know that at a relatively small amount of risk why can't you at a small company Mm -hmm. uh, or a mid-sized mm -hmm. operation. So I, I can resonate with that 
that conversation quite easily. Tyler, any anything you wanted to add? Nothing, nothing particularly unique. I, I would echo that um, what Dave said. We see we see all types of companies being successful with 3D PDF, and I think it does come down a lot of times to an awareness. I had no idea my PDF could do that. That mm-hmm. anyone who has reader on on their machine could actually view and interact with a 3D model. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see co- companies of all sizes. So, you know, one of our, one of our partners is SolidWorks, and they've added 3D PDF to their MVD module. That's a big company, but they sell to a lot of mid-sized manufacturers. And the reason they added that into SolidWorks MVD is because that's a technology that is, um, you know, as has already been said, very accessible, very easy to integrate into your I- existing systems. And all of a sudden, a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have had access to kind of the valuable data that's included in, in the 3D model, because that model is in engineering, now they have access to that, and that can inform the decisions they're making. So let's talk about some specific use cases, maybe. You know, we've, we've said that there are lots of applications, and collaboration is definitely something that comes into play. What would be, let's just you know, name a couple of different use cases that might resonate with our listeners here. Well, I think one thing that we we used it, when I was at BE is the ability to annotate that 3D PDF when we sent that the document the PDF document to Boeing, and they did see things that they needed us to adjust. The old days, you take a red pen to the drawing, and you you would have printed out 50 pages, and you take a red pen and mark it up. And with a 3D PDF, you're able to annotate that and what actually happens is it actually snapshots the camera angle and view when it drops that annotation in. And so when that PDF is saved and sent back from Boeing to the BE office, that electrical team was able to see exactly what that engineer was seeing. So you get direct feedback. So the collaboration, albeit it's a send and receive markup, it's not a, it's not real time. It gives you a lot more context of what that engineer was seeing when he's marking it up. So, and and this, granted, this is a large assembly. This applies to the simplest of piece parts too. Uh, you, you're a situation where you provide you're a provider to an OEM in automotive or aerospace or heavy machinery, anything like that, where you've got the the parent customer marking things up and feeding back. I need it to integrate in this way. Great, you can see that capture that context. And what would what would you say is the learning curve for something? So again, thinking about our you our listeners and they might be loving what they're hearing and you know, to Dave's point, hey, this might be too good to be true that what he hears from some customers. Another resistance might be, mm-hmm. oh, but it just it sounds hard and I don't know that I'd be able to do it. I'm not an engineer. What's uh what's the learning curve? For with multiple roles, right? Because I think one of the things we talk about is that, you know, you don't have to know CAD, you don't have to be an engineer. You can annotate on a three D PDF and not have, not need, you know, specific technical experience. So, what would you say is a learning curve, or how how would you talk about that with different roles? Would you like me to comment on that? Uh, you or if you know Dave or Tyler has examples of other uh, customers they've talked to. I think just quickly, our our experience was that it was extremely straightforward. Everyone was familiar with a PDF interface using the Adobe Reader. You can use any Mm -hmm. reader. Mm -hmm. So from that aspect, PDF is ubiquitous. And the the telling point was when you could take someone that hadn't seen it before, a chief engineer or someone like that, that is moderately technical, but they've been separated from CAD for years, and they can jump in and and operate a, a designer view using a PDF. You've hit the mark. And... You know, you, you try to design something that, that fits the entire firm that you don't need to have some complex set of instructions. And again, this is a home run. This is mm-hmm. not this is not something that's hard to digest. I, that, that mirrors my experience, too, Andrew. I, I think that part of the, the sort of low risk and uh, high value part of the proposition is that, as Dave said at the beginning, you, you know what a PDF file is. And. You know, if you think about an organization beyond that, they know exactly how to manage those things. Uh, there's really nothing that you have to do in order to uh, sort of streamline the adoption of this it, to whatever means somebody wants to use to, uh, you know, to actually manage these things once you have created them. So the chief engineer can pull them up out of his email if he wants to or whatever system they use to manage their technical data and just start to work. 
Mm-hmm. Angela, I think some of the some of the good, you know, you were talking about use cases, and we've talked about somewhat technical use cases so far, but where you really see this ease of adoption thing come through is when you have people who just aren't engineers interacting with the data. So, you know, when it when it's something like assembly instructions, I mean I've seen I've actually seen people use it to, you know, show them how to assemble Legos. So for something as as mundane as that, but having, you know, the power of a 3D interactive model and just being able to click on it, walk through steps, see how things fit together. So when you take it outside of that of that manufacturing context and you start talking about things like work instructions, you know, things like that, and you have people who aren't technical at all, that's that's where um, you can really see how powerful it is. Because it is, it's just a viewer. And if you know how to open up Acrobat and interact with content in Acrobat, it's, it's just like doing that. No, I think that's a great point. So going back to talking about collaboration and how day viewing sits on the fence between these groups. And it's not just two groups, right? There's multiple groups that are having to work together. And communication is always an issue. Understanding the different documents is always an issue. And then Dave Opsal, your point about it being a very easy integration, because that's another resistance. I think people have like, Oh God, another system that I have to implement. It's going to, I'm going to have downtime and my team's going to have to take time away from doing what they're doing. And it sounds like that's really not the case. Or if, if there is some downtime, it might be a couple hours, not a couple weeks. You know, one, one thing that might be interesting illustration of that is we haven't asked Dave about Aris PLM and, and their use of 3D PDF and what he's hearing from his customers. But, you know, PLM stretching outside of engineering and manufacturing to touch all all the other groups that are involved with the development of a new product and managing that product's life cycle. Um, I, I'd be interested in hearing Dave talk a little bit about that. Sure. Well, you know, we believe in the idea of PDF as a delivery vehicle, as a, and we, I say PDF in general for both a 2D document, like you might think of a Word doc, and also for 3D for a, a drawing or a model. And to that extent, we've built it into the standard product that you you get from Aris, the, the Aris Innovator PLM package. And that actually, you that's included with the, the software when you install it. There's there's no extra licensing, and you're, you're a subscriber, you get it. And, and that's if you, you put a document in there, and you can you one of the things we have is on the front end you're making documents a uh, requirement document or or uh, proposals from a marketing team or something like that. So you're using the Office Suite. Our Office Connector it enables this PDF uh, conversion. So as you're done creating your your Word file or your PowerPoint or Excel, and you save that into the Innovator to into Aris Innovator, the PDF is automatically generated. And it's automatically put in the item. You don't have to think about it. We do it for you. The same applies to the guy that's doing the draw, the modeling. So that, that heavy CAD guy, he's over there cranking away, and he had saved to go home for the day. It's automatically uh, pushes the model back in and, and creates the, a 3D PDF of that model. So now I've got this ubiquitous capability of viewing, and we've built a viewer in on top of Eris so that no matter what type of user you've got, the marketing guy that's comfortable in Word, but hey, you know, I'm not sure what this thing looks like. Well, no problem. He can go and open the part from the bill of material and see the 3D PDF of that part or that assembly, whatever the product is. And it's the same viewing capability, completely comfortable, able to move throughout the, the suite of tools. And we even go as far as with our, our new capabilities with uh, technical documentation to publish the PDF. That So it's something we, we use across the board. And so what, what has been the, um, with some of your customers that are using this solution, what's been the the time to, okay, we, we tell them about this, the solution, they see it, they adopt it, and then they're using it. What's that whole timeline like? Uh, or, or if it's not that simple, you know. <laughs> you know what, no, it really <laughs> is Be, because, uh, you know, engineers, we, we talk about the business of engineering here that it's more than just making 3D models and some drawings. There's a lot more going on to, to profitably make a product that, that hits the market uh, specs and, 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 you know, keeps your business going. And, and so that means you're generating documents and whether it's the chief engineer writing reports or a certification engineer writing a report or, or what have you. Our customers are able to, once they subscribe, they use the Office Connector, it, it becomes second nature. Mm-hmm. They're used to using Word. They can start Word. There's an Aris toolbar. They don't have to enter Aris first. They enter Office. They're comfortable. 
-hmm. So, you know, we didn't have, and that's a case where we didn't have to change their, their own workflow, how they, they come in in the morning and do their work. And I think that's, that's one thing that helps along the way too, whenever you're developing a solution is, is to try to not disrupt the workflow as much as possible. The biggest thing that, that we get to, the, the biggest feedback is, well, you know, taking a quick step back, we, we sort of think that when we really do our job right building PLM, we sort of blend into the background. You don't have to think about us. You're, you're able to execute what you have to do. And, and we see that with the Office Connector and the PDF capability. We sort of blend into the background. People don't have to think anymore. It's second nature. We're used to using the Office Suite. Now, take that uh, a step further where I can go into the PLM suite and I can see the viewable file, that, that PDF through our viewer, whether it's a 2D document, PowerPoint, what have you, specification document, or a 3D CAD model that's been converted. Now I can go in and use our markup tools to go in and mark it up. So if you think of kind of, you made a point about uh, assembly instructions. So if the guy in the shop floor says, hey, this doesn't fit, he's able to open that PDF, mark it up, mm -hmm. generate a problem report, and that that markup travels with the item. Mm -hmm. It doesn't revise the item, but it actually travels with it. So now everybody in the organization can see it. Instead of just having a problem report, we see it. We see the problem. You can even snap a picture and mark it up if you needed to. And, and that capability now increases the value uh, of, of the tool set, but by increasing the efficiency of the people that are doing the work. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like everybody that's listening should go try it if they haven't tried it <laughs> already. Um, no, it's, we like, it's, we it's like to amazing. think so. Yeah. <laughs> so we're coming up on our, on our time here. So I'll just ask uh, Dave and Tyler for some final thoughts, and then we're going to get our, our challenge for our listeners from Dave Ewing. So Dave or Tyler, any final thoughts you want to share before we wrap up? I, I think we've kind of hit on, on the major points that, you know, this is a piece of technology that has a lot of potential for people and companies of all sizes. Uh, you don't have to be a Boeing. Uh, you don't have to be, you know, thinking about an enterprise class solution to figure mm -hmm. out how you can make this benefit your organization. Right. And they need to give it a try. Agreed. Yeah. I, I think that that's that's one thing. You know, we talked a lot about documentation and drawings today, but really, you can you can think of a whole lot of different applications of this technology, and you don't need Absolutely. to be a major enterprise to to use it. It's something that you can download, try out for yourself, and and really, as as you show people this technology, they go, "Wow, I can think of about ten places in my organization mm -hmm. where this would be real." Effective because you can, you know, you can make this engineering data available in all sorts of different formats, whether that's assembly, disassembly, maintenance, repair, operations, or just a brochure. Just being able to bring something to life in 3D is is extremely valuable. So um, just, you know, yeah, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and and Dave, I think your challenge is going to be similar. But uh, what's your what's your final word and our challenge for our listeners today? Well, I. I I've always uh, thought if you, you put a smart team together, they'll, they'll come up with some great ideas that they can take a look at what you do. And so my challenge would be, you know, pick a couple folks in your organization to, to take a look at where some opportunities might be and go adopt something and drop some money on it. You know, it, it takes, takes a little bit of investment to make this happen, whether it be starting with a simple drawing or some type of documentation. But you know, the biggest bang is really getting that 3D in there. So I would say, your simple piece part drawings. Go do it. This is not hard. It, it's it's not necessarily easy. You've got to work through it. Th this this fits right into any PLM system. Uh, you, you know, granted, Eris has it built right in because we day one we bet on it. Says this is the right way to go. But hey, look, the, our, our our brethren in the PLM industry they support it also. You don't have to be on Eris. Siemens supports it. Uh, go off and do it. Pick a project. Go do it. I would highly suggest an agile methodology so that you can, you know, start small, get some quick wins and iterate on it and keep refining it until you get to something and say, hey, we're done. And then you've generated this win and, and energy and a better business process. And that energy, now you can run with that. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a whole bunch of people saying, now they're pulling on the rope. Hey, I've seen this work. Mm -hmm. now, now can we do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z? That's powerful because now you've got people all bought in across the organization, and that's huge. So go do it. 
to take a, a tagline from Nike, just do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, excellent. Well, thank you everybody for your participation today. If our listeners are not convinced to tr- to at least look at 3D PDF and and take a, a spin. Um, I'm not sure what else would convince them to do so. So you heard it here, everybody. Go do it. Go try it. There's free trials, so it's not going to cost you anything. Just Google free trial 3D PDF, and I'm sure we'll have lots of links that come up. And, of course, we will include some specific links in our show notes for you to to direct you in the right location. And with that, thanks, everybody, for listening. Please be sure to subscribe to the Beyond 3D podcast on SoundCloud and on iTunes. Leave us a review and share with all your colleagues, friends, and family and get them listening as well. And until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank Thank you, you. Angela. Thank you for joining us on the Beyond 3D podcast hosted by TechSoft 3D. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review or subscribe on SoundCloud. To listen to past episodes or learn more about TechSoft 3D, visit www.techsoft3d.com forward slash blog. Send us comments and suggestions at info at techsoft3d.com. Thanks again for listening, and we hope you'll join us again on the next episode of Beyond 3D. Beyond 3D.